to know more such amazing stories from Indian history, click the bell icon and subscribe to Live History India. It all began with a minor incident in Naxalbari, a village in West Bengal's Darjeeling district. A tribal sharecropper was assaulted by the hirelings of a village landlord. In the conflict that followed, a policeman was killed. The next day, on the 25th of May in 1967, 11 people were killed in a bigger clash between the police and angry protesters from nearby villages. Nobody thought that the Naxalbari incidents would ignite a violent insurrection that would pose what former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh called the greatest internal security threat to India. Its international ramifications can be understood from the fact that Peking Radio hailed the Naxalbari uprisings as a spring thunder. The Naxalbari clashes were the beginnings of the Naxalite movement, which influenced peasants, youths and students. Naxalbari-like localized armed insurrections erupted in parts of West Bengal, Odisha, Assam, Bihar and Andhra Pradesh, as well as some other states. Some of the brightest university students joined the Naxalite movement in the hope of ushering in a revolution they thought would create a society based on equity and justice. Their hopes were dashed, many were killed and many others languished in jail. As the Naxalites advocated violence, the movement was violently crushed by the government. At the centre of the Naxalite movement was Charu Majumdar, a Communist Party of India Marxist leader who was born in Siliguri. In 1966 and 67, he wrote a series of articles on Marxist-Leninist-Maoist thought known as the Historic Eight Documents. The crux of Majumdar's thought was that India was ripe for violent insurrection, for overthrow of the state and seizure of power through a protracted armed struggle led by poor peasants. He called upon communists to follow the Maoist path shown by Chinese leader Mao Zedong. Most notoriously, Charu Majumdar advocated an annihilation of class enemy to achieve the objectives of capturing power. The Naxalites indulged in targeted killings of ordinary policemen and middle-class farmers which left many idealistic youths from the movement disillusioned. In 1969, the Charu Majumdar faction of the CPIM, along with Kanu Sanyal, Jangal Santhal and other leaders subscribing to Maoism, split to form a separate party called the CPIML or CPI Marxist-Leninist. The ideological differences between the CPIM and CPIML mirrored the differences between the communist parties of the USSR and China. From the launch of the Naxalbari uprisings in 1967 till 1971, the CPIM was part of coalition governments in West Bengal. In March 1972, the Congress returned to power with a massive majority in state assembly elections marred by violence. The Congress formed the state government headed by Siddharth Shankar Ray, a man close to Indira Gandhi. The Ray government launched a massive crackdown on the Naxalites and a large number of youths and students suspected to be active in the movement were killed and jailed. The streets of Calcutta turned into war-like zones. Peasants, tribals and agricultural labourers died in rural areas in many states where they took up arms against landlords opposing their exploitation. On the 16th of July 1972, Charu Majumdar was arrested from a hideout in Calcutta. On the 28th of July, he died in a police lockup in the city. Majumdar's death led to initial disarray and fragmentation of the Naxalite movement, a movement named after a sleepy town in Darjeeling, but one that has created the violence-ridden Red Corridor that cuts through the heart of India. 
after five long decades, this failed revolution still causes blood to be split and lives to be lost.